I hope you're having an amazing day. My name is Colin. In this video, we're going to have another look, another day at the crypto market. What is the crypto gaming opportunities of today? What is the market looking like? Nothing in this video is financial advice. It is for entertainment purposes only. As always, we'll start having a look at Bitcoin and Ethereum. Other than that, the top 100 market is half green, half red, more green than red, which is positive news. Right, we will go straight into the fear and greed index to see what we got. And we're moving again slightly more towards the actual yellow space where the greed becomes more significant. However, there's a little uh, bit less fear than there was yesterday, right? So the extreme fear is weakening. We're heading into the right direction. And this is basically due to Bitcoin stabilizing, right? So last time we reviewed it, we were around uh, 3940K yesterday. It's a little bit declined, a little bit to 38, but it's holding strong. Now, the main question is, I don't know anything about technical analysis. I just keep reminding you of this. Is it going to blast beyond 40K and start the initial of a new bull cycle potentially? Or are we going back to 20K? Uh, the TA experts are quite divided on that one. I am most interested actually in Ethereum. I just started minting my own collection on OpenSea. Floor price is a thousand Ethereum right now. That's just me. There's nothing for sale. Everybody who has minted this one is going to keep it. It's from my Digits Club, my Launchpad and IDO gaming crypto community on Discord. If you're interested in that, check the link in the description. You still have an opportunity to join uh, very, very soon. Uh, but because that's in Ethereum, I need to keep my eye on this. And obviously, the whole NFT gaming crypto market is definitely involved with the Ethereum. So it came from 4K. So we're definitely in a linear upward trend right here. It's going to basically for the last, well, seven days, so to say, is looking quite healthy. It's just following the Bitcoin pattern. Literally, as you can see, you can see this dump right here. But 2800 for today, 387. It's looking quite good, at least. When we look at the crypto gaming, I hold some mana still on a weekly did really well today it's basically not destabilizing but just taking a little bit of a dip right it's not looking uh, as linear upward anymore right it's not going down either aggressively as well it's not that big of a deal my main concern is gala not gaining right so that's still a break even for me the central land has already gained quite a bit Vulcan has gained a lot and again is gaining today. So I'm already up like three, four K on Falcon. I'm, I'm considering taking my exit at this point uh, because I have gained basically almost all of the 37% gain. So it's extremely happy. I've been looking at Illuvium and they posted a YouTube video. I'll try to remember this and show you later. Um, but that has been quite cool that they can have like an open beta which you can play. It looks really nice. The guilds still going strong. U, U of O Gaming uh, did make a rapid run and just only the last hour or so, it's been a, on a small decline, right? Yeah, because I looked at it this morning at about 8 a.m. and on 9.20 it reached basically the high and then it rapidly declined. I don't know why, but it's been making some major moves lately. Look at this, you see? So definitely almost went up to 60 uh, 60 percent gain over the last seven days 48.4 percent so definitely quite significant victoria we are slowly been losing value but it's holding extremely stable this one did like i think a huge x on the actual uh, ido right so if we look at victoria vr it did ieo actually 122x current 212 at the all-time high so it's extremely stable at more than 100x so extremely impressive however i do think it's a little bit overvalued at this point for what it is c divide losing value quite strange they're coming with the airdrop the airdrop didn't have the effect that i thought it would have the airdrop announcement it did create a little bit of more demand Right, so I have to take the one month because it was already a week ago. But the spike you see here, this run was basically the announcement. So the announcement, I believe, came here. So this small uh, spike was the announcement of the actual NFT uh, token airdrop that they're going to be incubating into their platform. 
uh, but it has been quite parallel ever since, perhaps because they have chosen to distribute across large NFT communities. They have selected Neo Tokyo, of which I'm a part of, and then they have selected Journey Club as well. They've already announced this. When we go down more, Wilder World, uh, I've been following on Twitter, uh, seeing some posts of their stuff. It looks quite of an interesting concept, so I've been keeping this one so the Ethereum blockchain, the NFTs are primarily cars. They're currently online, but it looks really, really cool. Um, you got wheels, you got kicks, you got cribs, you got land, and then your guild. The kicks and the wheels are already alive on OpenSea. Uh, and basically it's a full metaverse, but you can tell from the website that it's quite unique. It looks quite cool. Uh, and I, I've been putting this one on my radar. So you might want to check this one out as well not uh, i wouldn't say primarily because there's a lot of information already right i think it's definitely uh, super early still uh, however some significant trades have already been made on OpenSea, so the floors already have an ethereum which is quite significant i would say uh, and there's definitely some tradable volume like three ethereum three ethereum so definitely when this takes a uh, massive traction which from the branding point of view i think it can do um, there's definitely a lot of opportunity there one thing i do want to stress when you look at something like this project um, let me see wilder world white paper if you um, okay so info.wilderworld is basically their uh, their real website so if you play this video, I assume we're going to be quite impressed. Uh, it's quite calm. But the branding is, I mean, that's what I liked initially about the project, the branding, the artwork. It looks uh, really, really impressive. So you got the wild and loot tokens and liquid art market. So I like the entire concept of this, uh, this ID. But I, I basically would want to see what the actual um, roadmap involves, right? And I haven't explored that, so I'm going to explore that first before I, I tell you guys what kind of moves I'm making. But definitely an interesting one, Wilder World, on the radar of your boy Digits. All right. Then we have, let me see, because we, we did have some bigger gainers as well. Star Atlas, not having any traction. Foxies, I haven't seen this one before, taking significant gains. I don't even know what it's about. Krabada, obviously, after the huge run, taking a little bit of a correction, makes sense, people taking profit. Uh, Mines of Delania is actually finally moving, but not significant, only 8% over the last seven days. Veracity still doing nothing. This token is so fucking passive. Um, relative right because it gave from eight cents now it's two cents so it lost four of its value but it doesn't respond it does respond to the market but not as most co uh, coins do there's a way less significant pumps in ferocity than there's in other coins uh, it could be a good thing could be a bad thing i definitely keep my eye on this daily alien worlds of which i spoke about before one of the biggest play to earn games gaining more traction five percent increase in value quite nice there D race finally moving today. So I bought it. I think it's still a round break even. There's no massive profits there. Falcon is definitely my best pick. Uh, but I'm trying to get rid of D race. So as soon as you guys want to know, let's have a look. 172. Let me check what I got it for. So if it's break even again, I'm going to drop it. Yeah, I'm at 3% profit. So I have about $5,000 in it right now. I'll probably after this video dump my D race. Um, and just focus on folk and take the profit there. Put it back into stables. I'm not really uh, in it to play for the long term, unless there are projects I actually want to play long term, like Cryo War, Chumbi Valley, some of these projects. Davina Finance still having a great opportunity of entry, in my opinion. Soul Chicks, don't enter this shit project, but I do reflect this later on in a second. Uh, when oh I see crypto blades I did look at that before where is it crypto blades right here gaining ah oh, you know I always like to say should have would have could have but you didn't 
right? Do people say like, oh my God, I was looking at that, but I missed out. Shut the fuck up, right? Uh, that, that's what happens. But I was actually looking at this one, I think two days ago, uh, I saw an announcement and it had like a huge pump uh, two days ago. Uh, but I didn't I didn't look at it uh, before the pump it, well, it wasn't even like super significant but the thing is when you look at crypto blades let me see if it pulls up because I, I saw it on Twitter I believe I came across somebody retweeted something on Twitter and um, it doesn't look like an a style game it just looks playable right that's why I think that people would actually have fun playing this right and, and enjoy it uh because it's like literally the type of story like the elder scroll style i feel like yeah it would it would be uh would definitely be quite cool um oh fuck. okay so it's already quite high in value with only six million market cap so i'm keeping my eye on this one i'm not going to make my move right now obviously after the pump i'm just going to be patient but it's on my list right let me see what else is interesting. So we do have some some bigger movers here. I've been looking at Espo World, but it's not doing that well. Uh, sometimes there's quite big pumps in these low market cap. Obviously, these are like micro cap things, right? These are all under a million dollars. There can be uh, huge pumps, as we see here with one of our old friends, which I'm not no longer holding, right? But I do want to highlight this for you. And we'll make some comparisons because I don't think Cryo Wars right here. I will open that as well. This one is, is these are unconfirmed market caps. Altura. Yeah, I'll just leave it at this for now because we have got a whole long fucking list. Ooh, okay. Perfect. So Neneco right here. Right? I exited Neneco a long time ago. People keep asking me if you if you're on YouTube, I announce what I'm buying sometimes, right? It's just my opinion. It's not financial advice, obviously. But in Discord, I usually also tell what I'm selling something or getting, uh, leaving my position or if I'm still holding it or not. Because people ask me all the time, update the Neko, update the Neko. I'm not going to update the Neko because I'm not holding it anymore. I'm not watching it, right? So as soon as the game launched happened, I got rid of my tokens. There was a huge spike. Even before that, I got rid of my tokens on the initial uh, bumps. Right, I sold the NFTs they gave me. Uh, I did give one away as well. Um, there was a uh, downturn, right? And now it's pumping again. With such a small market cap, so the market cap is actually a little bit bigger uh, according to the team. It's about 4 million uh, relative to what we have on OpenSea right here. But still, a 25% daily gain. What you see with a token like Nineco is that you just got to be patient. You just got to wait it out. Just take a low entry whenever it dumps like 30%. And again, look at the fear and greed index. Buy when others are fearful. When this dumps 30%, everybody's going to dump. Then if you make an entry, you would be quite soon rewarded. The game is one of the easiest, what I've been told to play, people think it's extremely enjoyable, which is obviously for the adaption of the game and adaption of the token, really important. They have another token, which is called Mata. Right, and Neko Mata, which is the inflationary token, that gained 33%. That's absolutely mad. But obviously, when people start to play the game, the demand goes up for that. So I don't know if they enabled the breeding or whatever they did, but they did do something because this looks extremely, extremely good. And you could have bought this token for like 1.4 cents and made like a 3x just by holding it, let's say uh, a week and a half, right? Not even which the opportunities are definitely out there, even with the bearish pattern in the market. Now, when we look at something like Monkey Ball, I already said it was way overvalued. Everybody said it wasn't true. I said it would go under a dollar and it definitely did go under a dollar. Uh, currently sitting at about 12 million. I think it will hold quite strong under uh, around 10 million because most of the time these games do, uh, but they're losing significant volume, right? So they're already on FTX and it's not being traded, which is a very, very bad sign for this token. The Solana blockchain games haven't been going that well during this bearish pattern in the market, but Monkey Ball has a shit team and now they're shit volume and they have a shit market cap. So I'm not too pumped about this project in general. I don't think it will go anywhere. I would not tell anybody to look at this in general. However, Altura, my one true love, one of the first tokens I ever got in and I still am participating in, 
uh, as of my crypto gaming journey, that is, because uh, I've been in crypto lo a lot longer than that, but crypto gaming, eight cents, um, yeah, giving me some profits at least. I got in, I think somewhere here. So it's it's not definitely that much of a gain, but at least better than break even. Uh, and I do th see a longer future for Altura. So I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Um, this project seems to be quite pumping. I haven't still haven't investigated it. I just wanted to open it because I see it was like 5% up again. Uh, quite high market cap. Cryo War, little uh, leg up. They did do a beta yesterday. And people ask me like, oh my God, you lost $5,000 on your Cryo War trade. It's in my long-term portfolio, so I can't touch it anyway. So it's all good for me. I'm going to hold this six months if that's what's needed. Um, I just want to see if we can see the actual demo. Because I'm in the Cryo War Discord, obviously. Let's see if they posted a video of the demo. Partnership, partnership, beta testing. Because they were going to show uh, demo. Demo. No, I want to search in all channels. Demo. Okay. This was about a week ago. Okay, so it's like a mobile arena fight right so this is the the knight who can do damage and this is the one with the active abilities the magician and stuff now he's right oh now he switched to a different character now it's the blade the master who can do like the spins and shit and these fights apparently they don't take long if you can see their health right uh quite interesting so obviously with these gameplay when they're actually teasing it because this is what it looks like in the menu right let me see if i can open this properly so what, what it would looks like in like the menu is like this. And that's why like, I mean, gameplay, uh, vid the actual gameplay content is so important uh, because when we're talking about actual in-game, it just looks so different, right? These menus, they still look really nice and professional, but from the top of the game, it looks very different. And I think still, is quite good so if you, if you look at how this is designed compared to how the website is designed every time the quality becomes less significant right which i mean is important it's a mobile game it doesn't have to be perfect right they're still in the development phase but i'm quite impressed that they're able to deliver a high quality a plus game so i'm definitely bullish on it in the long term and for my long-term investments that's basically what i do i keep up to date with what they're doing what it's looking and what the actual content looks like. If the game was shit, I would take my 50% loss. I don't give a fuck, right? But I, I'm, I'm still extremely bullish on Cryo War and I will hold it in the long term. Although the chart looks exactly like Monkey Ball, I think Cryo War will recover. Uh, and uh, because it has such a unique element, there's no game really like it. And I'm just a fucking fanboy. End of story. Right, when we, that's basically the, the blockchain gaming. We, we can pull some other ones up fast. Effin, uh, holding quite strong. I'm, I'm not sure, they did alter it a little bit, so it's flatlined, so that's not the real chart, right? So let me go to PooCoin, pull up the real chart. I think it's 125, last time we checked it. I don't know why CoinMarketCap is not updating it, but it's at 147. Right, so definitely uh, made made those gains after that drop. Uh, when we re reviewed it yesterday, um, made those gains back. Seeing at 147, 10 times IDO price in the first week, amazing results, right? Definitely amazing results. Bullish on that future, but the drop will come, I think, when the daily linear vesting is released. Soul Chicks, uh, fucking nightmare. Why am I still covering this project on a daily basis? I'm still looking at the price on a daily basis because I still need to get a lot of tokens. The 13th of February, I 
I think this will go to two cents, 1.5 cents. And then um, basically with a market cap of 7 million, it will go to a market cap of four, three, four million. The volume is basically the same as Monkey Ball, which is also a dead project. There have been no new listings. There have been no new updates. All they do is sell more NFTs and do a bigger cash grab. Definitely my biggest mistake of 2021, but big lesson learned. Everdome is still not live. Uh, the Meta Hero, which is basically the partner token, right, from Robert Grin, is suffering still. So still 5.2, took another dive even, minus 5%. Unfortunate, that's all I can say about it. But fully diluted market cap at 500 million, obviously in the current pattern, they only have that device that scans you and could make you potentially into an NFT, but it's not ready, I would say, in order to do so on a giant scale. Uh, Magic Craft making slight gains, 13%, quite interesting. I'm not really interested in touching this until there's a major announcement and a potential for a flip, uh, because I know if I would cover it in the video again, I would make an entry. Uh, most of the viewers will make an entry with me because previously was quite uh, good, and that would pump the token into a bullish run, uh, like basically we did last time, right? So here, this was basically the announcement of the, the video uh, that, that kicked it to here and the market took it from there, right? I don't want to say I'm responsible for this pump, but definitely because there were no real utilities, no additions, it just slowly died out. And I don't think that's what this channel is for. This channel is more so for research um, and I'm just sharing my own journey. And I'm not interested in holding Magic Pro for the long term in this case, because the, I don't see any major updates coming up. Uh, that anybody could benefit from. But I do keep my eye on it. I do think it's definitely interesting, right? And I think that's in general one of the most important things. Um, I think the whole distribution there is quite interesting. So we have some other tokens that might be interesting to discuss because the IOTAX pad uh, IDO was postponed, but it's taking place in February. I don't think they have announced the date yet but they they did post some teasers already um regarding iotex the iotex pet launch look uh they're getting closer they will launch on both binance smart chain and iotex chain they did uh, some posts already about the allocations all that stuff which basically means that if iotex pet launches and it does well the iotex token will also pump at the same time same strategy as I mentioned before on this channel, these things go hand in hand, in my opinion. Uh, another platform uh, doing its IDO February or March, not yet announced, is Dotpad from uh, Bluezilla, right? Make sure you find the right one because there's a lot of scammy ones. Uh, Duckyland is coming with their IDO. Private sale was completed in January, IDO was postponed. They're coming uh, with their IDO. I think mid-February, end of February. They're still looking at the market conditions, obviously, uh, but they're doing a huge airdrop right now, which is getting them a lot of attention. So I assume after the airdrop, they will announce, or parallel, they will announce the actual IDO, right? Which would look upcoming IDO on Binstarter. It's featuring Duckyland as well. Uh, but they have a 50,000 people retweeting this airdrop tweet. They gained a ton of followers, a ton of exposure in doing this airdrop. So that definitely makes sense. Other projects um, that are interesting is obviously, uh, what was it called again? Pax World. So Pax World is coming up. It's like a metaverse project. Uh, that is, uh, I mean, any metaverse project so far has been pumping really, really significantly. Uh, so that's definitely to be considered launching on game zone and a couple of other pads um, IDO soon animalia also coming uh, we already know this um, bullifers i've covered on this channel plutonians i've covered i've covered adroverse guys i'm covering everything in the gipro gaming space so make sure to subscribe if you're not already all right let's move on so we covered the crypto gaming let's move on to OpenSea. Uh, oh, the launch pads. We didn't cover the launch pads yet. Uh, let's do it quite quickly. So UFA gaming pumping, C Stable not growing, BSC pad not recovering, 
this one which i haven't looked at still pumping quite crazy all the other launch pads are kind of near stabilization right pulse pad making some minor gains after the significant losses so basically the bluezilla pads recovering their initial losses quite a bit quite a bit but not super significant right they're not pumping or anything uh, out of the ordinary when we look at the other pads there's nothing big on a huge opportunity one thing that was mentioned in the digits club uh, which if you don't know is obviously our private nft community which you can soon be a member of you can mint these nfts join the link in the description takes you to discord we have a great opportunity and you can ask there how can i become a premium digits club member um, is actually firestarter so firestarter flames i've, I've also covered this before the, the firestarters uh, the flares uh, they are still extremely cheap and digit club community members have been buying these in bulk uh, because we have some interesting information some uh, calculations on how these would actually benefit us in the medium long term to get super high allocation and or additional benefits on the firestarter launchpad so if you want to know how that works then definitely join the community uh, because they are still currently extremely cheap but you need to know which ones to buy for how much and how many of course right if we go into OpenSea, we have the board at yacht club losing value right basically the entire top five has been reduced so from 118 to 105 from 19 floor to 13 uh, when ethereum goes up these projects stop pumping of course at some point one project that I'm interested in that is still pumping is Neo Tokyo Outer Identities uh, sitting at 8.45 floor coming from a 5 Ethereum floor just a week ago. I have a medium allocation with medium rarity uh, and they have been flying off the shelves because the tournament is coming up on Friday. So if you own an Outer Identity, you can get the components as I explained yesterday in the video for free by participating in the actual tournament if you don't participate you end up in the lower percent and you still get hella benefits uh, and i think if you have this type of money in my opinion this would be one of the smartest moves to make right now i hold a medium allocation with medium rarity which i bought really really early so I bought it for five Ethereum as soon the day the other identities were released. I didn't participate in the in the minting, but mine is valued on its rarity about 14.515 Ethereum. So it is quite high. Um, these ones are a little bit lower. They're still same allocation, but lower rarity. Uh, but you can buy a floor one basically, which are still quite expensive, right? So if you look at low allocation, uh, they're still $23,000. So for most people, I understand this is an expensive project, but I believe according to the calculations that were made, the goods that you might receive have an average value of, let's say, 12 Ethereum. So if you invest 8 Ethereum and then you get 12, then you have made significant gains. But obviously, that's all speculation. We're yet to see where that all goes. But the outdoor identities is definitely something that is pumping right now. Friday, it's the playoff tournament. Saturday are, is the final. So the qualifier is on Friday. Uh, and I'm going to play, we're going to play Pup G. 4,000 people, 40 rounds of 100 people at a time. First person shooter. I, I don't even have a Windows computer, so I need to figure that out. But that's uh, <laughs> going to be a fun evening. Journey Club sitting at 5.3 Ethereum. Uh, and other than that, there's not much I'm following on OpenSea currently, just because I have little time and I don't really like the illiquidness of NFTs in general. I like to play with IDOs, right? So let's leave OpenSea. Let's go to LuxRare. Um, that's one that I actually missed on Coin Market Cap. It's a LuxRare token. I think it's holding at about 525 right now. 536 so it's definitely uh, getting a small pump again the apr is still extremely high sitting at oh it dropped 100 percent for 150 uh, percent from yesterday so sitting at 500 i think it's still good still interesting to look at uh but definitely volatile right so definitely volatile 
All in all, the, the crypto gaming scene seems to be stabilizing. There are not that many interesting IDOs coming up just yet. If there are more IDO opportunities, I will obviously uh, focus on them on this channel in this daily series. But for now, it's pretty quiet. I've shown you basically today everything that I'm looking at and I'm covering. And of course, I'm very much focused on the launch of Digits Club Friday you will see a huge influx of users. So we'll go from 65 people where the pre-sale, so there's 10 people that still need to mint. Then I'm going to open up the next round, which is all private, so you cannot join if you're not in the pre-sale, but there will be added a thousand NFTs on Friday. So there will be some secondary marketplace sales. So I put one for sale just to test. I put it in a thousand Ethereum, this is me. This is not even my personal account. This is the business account, right? That I'm locked into, Digits Club. Uh, and I don't even have a Digits Club NFT yet. I need to wait because I wasn't on the whitelist. I didn't add my own wallet. But on Friday, I am. So on Friday, um, I'm going to mint. If you want to know more about the mint, how that works, or what kind of price you should expect on the secondary marketplace, join the Discord and feel free to ask all the questions that you might have. But definitely there will be a thousand NFTs out of the 9,999 that we're going to be uh, releasing. So the secondary marketplace should have some trades this weekend. If you have any other questions about the gaming market or projects that you would like me to have a look at, definitely drop them down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.